be able to drop into our hearts. Hallelujah. Getting our hearts ready for what is going to be spoken. Did anyone have a word of encouragement this morning? What you're sensing or what you're feeling, what God is doing this morning. Only what you got this morning during the worship. A word of encouragement. Um, I feel there's a, a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire coming down and purifying us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. That's good. Yes. Good. Amen. Very powerful anointing. Very powerful presence of God this morning. It was very powerful. Very touching. Just touches your very heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hi, Pastor Yara. I just felt the oneness with God. If anybody is feeling like they're separate, we are not. It's like God is just showing his one with us, Christ in us and the father in him. So the father in us just, just, he said, be one as they are one. So there's such a beautiful union, you know, with the father, we are not separate. So just remember that you, you know, whatever we are going through, God is with us. He's always with us for us. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. That's so powerful. We can all come in agreement with that. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory. Amen. Such a powerful anointing. I'm just feeling it inside of me. Just awesome. Anyone else this morning? A word that you received during worship or a sensing or a vision that you had? A word of encouragement during worship this morning? Yes, Pastor. When um, they were singing, I want to sit at your feet, drink mm -hmm. from the cup in your hand, I felt that we were really there, or I felt like I was really there sitting at Jesus' feet. Uh, the presence was so strong this morning. Amen. Yes. Amen. It was like you literally felt it. Yes. Amen. Yes, Javan. Yeah, I just felt an overwhelming sense of healing coming. And very early on in the worship, I just saw like a snake getting cut. And then at the end of the worship, I saw like a really big pyramid crumbling away. So, yeah. Hallelujah. I really felt that the worship was just touching heaven and just, just to the far, touching the Father's heart. Just so, um, yeah, precious. Amen, yes. Amen, it was very, very powerful. Amen. It was. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else got something this morning? Word of encouragement to the body? Yeah, I got this morning, uh, similar to what Sylvia seen was, um, as we were singing, uh, I want to sit at your feet, I just sort of sensed that everyone was just coming to the altar and just sitting at the feet of Jesus. And as we were doing that, he just like wrapped his arms around us with his love. And we just thought, I uh, just felt like an over sense of his love like never before. Amen. That's true. Very powerful. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Those words, there's something taking place, isn't it? Like you could feel, sense it in the worship, and yes, you know, even even last week, all the way on Zoom, it's like uh, as if we are in church. You know, the mm. presence of God, there's the glory has been revealed and yeah. and poured down into our hearts. Mm. You know, I mean, just talking about it, I feel like crying. You know, just the love of God that is pouring and shed abroad in our hearts. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Belinda. Oh, just the same, like, I just feel God saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, and such an overwhelming presence of his love. It's just more than we could ever ask or imagine. He just loves us so much. It's beautiful. Mm. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Amen. Yes, Belinda, beautiful presence of Thank God's you. love. Yes, yeah, very touching. Amen. That's so much. Bring you to tears. Yes, it's just overwhelming. 
Amen. Just, just receive, church. The key is to receive. He is there right now, wherever you are. Yes. The power of God is available, and he's Amen. there right yes. now. By your side, he will never leave you. He cannot lie, church. He, he's there. You can touch the hem of his garment today. Whatever you are crying out from God, you just reach out and touch him. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We are so blessed. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else? Hello, Pastor. This is Trivian. Yes, Trivian. I, I just got doing worship that we were all chosen by the creator of the universe and that we are given the opportunity to be in his presence mm. and that he's just so good to us. Though we don't deserve anything, he has chosen us and has given us everything. And he just continues to amaze us every day. Mm. So much for yes, I love that what you said, that God continues to amaze us every day. That's that's awesome. Amen. That's so true, Trevin. Mm. Good yes. morning. Good morning, Kathy. Um, just the same as Belinda said, I just feel an incredibly wonderful enveloping love, like a giant hug from the Lord in a deep, deep peace and calmness and relax, relaxation sort of feeling. Just beautiful. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Praise God. Yes. Amen. Amazing love. Amazing love. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Thank you, Lord. Just feel his wraparound presence, church, around you, holding, holding you closer to him. Just forget about everything else and just you and the Lord at the moment. Just let him wrap his presence around you right now. He's a daddy. He's a father who will never leave you or forsake you. Amen. Lord, I'm with you always, always, even up till the end, even if you don't understand that word or believe that word just keep saying it because god cannot lie lord I'm with you always even up till the end that's his promise his love for you that he's always there by your side you know i sharing even yesterday there are millions and billions of people in the world but god has handpicked every one of you Everyone at the sound of my voice, mm. God has handpicked you, people near and far, your families, you believe he picked you to pick them. Anyone that you, is in touch with you, they are not by accident in touch with you. They're, they're going to, if you believe that God will move on their life, regardless, mm. or if they like you or insulted you or said something about you or don't agree with you, they're there for a purpose. And because of you, God will open up their hearts and take that stony heart and give them a heart of flesh and a new spirit. And they will change right before your very eyes. God is bigger than the devil and he's bigger than man. He's bigger than you and me. He's a mighty God and he loves you so much that he came down from heaven to show you the way. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Anyone else got something? Before we take communion, if you want to get ready for communion, please. Those near and far, just get your communion ready. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we could come, Lord, boldly to you, Lord, boldly to the throne of grace because of what you have done, Lord. You came down from heaven to show us the way from the earth to the cross by debt to pay. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, we lift your name on high, Lord. Give us that grateful heart, Lord, for what you have done for us, and we will worship you from the very depths of our hearts, and we will give you glory and honor, Lord, 
for paying the price for us, Lord. No one took your life. You gave your life because you remembered us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the life is in this meal today. The healing is in this meal today. Restoration, Lord, breakthrough, Lord, in every area of our life, Lord. We believe as we hold this bread, you are the bread. We remember that you are the bread of life. You are the bread of hope, Lord. In the beginning was the word. You are the word, Lord. The word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You gave it all, Jesus, and you died. You rose again that we are serving and worshiping a living God. Our God's not dead. He's alive, Lord, that your word is alive. Your word energizes us. Your word cuts through, Lord. Cuts through, Lord, into every area, every stubborn resistance, Lord. We believe that as we hold this bread, that we are holding you, Lord, the victory of Calvary. We claim every promise that you, the word, Lord, you bled and died for us to give us the victory, Lord. We celebrate, Lord, as you said, Lord, those who eat your flesh and drink your blood will have eternal life, Lord. Thank you, Father. We believe, Lord, as you said, this is my body. Take, eat, Lord, in remembrance that you have conquered the grave, Lord. We believe by faith, Lord, that every curse is being broken today as we join our faith and eat together, Lord. We believe for signs, wonders, and miracles in Jesus' name. Let us eat together. Thank you, Jesus. At the cross, at the cross, I first saw the life. And the burdens of my heart rolled away. Thank you, Lord, for the hope that you have given us. The life is in the blood, Lord. We believe today, Father, as we hold this cup, Lord, the blood you shed to redeem us, Lord, from every darkness, in every thought, every action, every way, Lord, to wash us, cleanse us. What can wash my sins away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus, Lord. We believe by faith as we drink together, Lord, that we will have life and have it more abundantly from this moment on in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Believe and drink together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. God mighty and powerful and good church. Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Don't forget the prayer meetings, transformation meetings from Monday to Friday till from 6 to 7. There are people watching us um, on 7.30 every morning and uh, Saturday 6 hours on 6 to 12. Try and make it church. Today we're going to share, share what God is doing and what he's what he's going to do and um, our belief church for something powerful to take place in in this meeting today and continue on right through the way today will be if you god is going to give you a revelation church I, I i believe in my heart that god is going to give you a revelation that you have never had before so try and log on to the transformation meetings even for 10 minutes some people on their way to work, they, 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 they watch us and, and lives have been transformed. This uh, COVID-19 has really pushed our church into levels I would have never have even dreamed or thought of, but God is always honors his word. He said, I'm able to do exceedingly abundantly about all that you may dare to dream, ask or dream or think of. That's the Amplified Bible says that, so believe God's word and uh, try and get in there for whatever time you can, even for five minutes. Make the last uh, at 7.30 or 7.15 to take communion with us. But it's better if you're there from six o'clock because you miss out a lot that's happening. I don't know whether Sh Sharmin is there yes, uh, today. 
Is Shamin there somewhere? Yes. Shamin, I'll get Shamin if you can to share that uh, testimony about praying in the Holy Ghost to Shamin later on as well, if you don't mind, please. Sorry to put you on the spot, but that's the way I am. I always put people on the spot. <laughs> Be ready when you were um, in and out of season. Uh, the uh, tenacious women will be on on um, at 10, 10, to 10 o'clock on Thursday. It will be on Zoom, so please try and make it church. And uh, we'll let you know when, when it opens up in the church. We need to get back there. Imagine the power and the anointing of God that has been this morning and when we get back to the church i mean it's increasing day by day our i mean those who are coming for the transformation meetings will agree with me it's, it's increasing by the hour church it's increasing when when we get off the prayer meeting you know it's i get up at sometimes at four o'clock in the morning you know most most days we are up early just after four in the morning and man the power and the anointing of god it's the excitement to get in there with the body of Christ is just outstanding. It's, you know God is going to do something or he's going to show something. And, uh, but this is not, this should not be something new. It has been there for thousands of years. We had just jumped into it. The earlier church, they broke bread daily. They gathered daily. They, uh, they took communion. They broke bread. And God added onto the church daily, not once a week when I feel like it and oh, I better go to church and then, you know, have the skid marks on the way, dragging yourself to the church in the morning, Sunday morning, and trying to make it. And you feel good. You feel hiked up. You might as well go for a football game. You feel good and feel hiked up or you have a good meal, you know. Um, but this is different church, you know. You need to eat. You need to eat the best food and all that because if you don't eat, you'll die. But men don't live on bread alone. And we need our daily bread. Amen. But the Bible says on every word of the Lord, and it's your daily bread. They could not have the manna the next day. It was full of maggots and they could not eat it the next day. God, is, God wants to give you daily bread. But today, you're going to get revelation that you have never seen or heard before. Um, also, don't forget the, uh, to tithe to the church as well, your tithes and offerings and be Thank you guys every day. I think of you guys. I give thanks to the Lord that you guys carried us. And, uh, you know, uh, most of you are putting your money in the, uh, in the bank. So try and continue to support the vision of the church, church. Particularly listen to this whole message today. Don't get out of this message till you come right up to the end because you will get something out of this. Um, uh, we need to take this message and today we are taking this message into the nations around the world and we have been doing it for the last uh, uh, few months and uh, we're expanding and increasing it. People, while, while we're talking right now, the, the messages are on YouTube, somebody in Africa or in Russia is listening and getting set free. And today it's going to be even more. God is advancing us and taking us from one level of glory to another. Uh, so um, go onto our web page, get onto the home page on the on the right hand side on the top is giving uh, to the Lord online giving. Just log that uh, and uh, memorize the your the bank details. Stick it on the fridge and put your bank details at the bottom of that fridge and put the scripture on the top of that fridge. That God is going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing into your bank account that you will not have enough room to contain it. That's God's word, church. Just receive and believe. He said he cannot lie. He's going to pour out his spirit onto all flesh. And uh, he's a God of abundance. Don't, don't ask God for a small cup. He wants your cup to run over. Amen? Okay, so um, the message... I don't know, there's so many titles I can use for this message, but I'll just put breakthrough. You're going to get a breakthrough this morning. Some of you who have been born again and, uh, you know, you're spirit filled, but you're fighting. You, you cannot get this breakthrough in your life. Uh, God is going to give you keys today, church, because God wants you to prosper. According to John 3, 2 says, beloved, that is you and me, beloved, you Listen to the words that came today, what Belinda said and Kathy and everyone that confirmed the words today. Beloved, 
Hallelujah. You can, you can just shout just for that word of God, Lord. He said, I pray that you will prosper in all things and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So even as your soul prospers, God wants you to prosper in all things. Say all, church. Oh. It's a familiar scripture, but you will understand, church, that, okay, you're born again, you're spirit-filled, but there's areas in your life, your husband, your wife, your child, your own body, your um, finances, your business, whatever it is, you got the key. You need faith. But the key of this is that faith is coming. So if you don't have faith for the breakthrough in your life, the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. So there's something you got to do. So you will have faith to have the breakthrough today because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord, not the doctor's report, not the negative report, not the negativeness in your business, in your finances. No, it comes by hearing and hearing. So if you don't have faith and you never have faith, today is your day to get faith because it comes, don't God, it is impossible for God to lie. Faith comes. So you are going to get your faith for your breakthrough today, church. Okay, before I go any further into this, because I want to share a little bit as well, Mandela has got a testimony that she's going to share. Now, if you, uh, when you're ready, Mandela, just take your time. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Um, about 10 days ago, I had a dream um, and I dreamt that I was in hospital and I was giving birth, but I was overcome with immense trauma, immense fear, immense anxiety. In a way, it was like a thousand times greater than what I actually experienced and felt um, th than when I actually had my girls in hospital. Um, and I could barely sleep and I was repenting to God, asking for forgiveness for the fear that I've allowed in my life for allowing this anxiety to overcome me I was repenting because I wanted to do anything to get the feeling off me um, and then even in my dream I saw like a zoom meeting setting where Pastor Yara and um, Uncle Ainsley were praying for me to to remove the trauma of my life and then the next morning I woke up and I logged into zoom and Pastor Ainsley shared that that same night where I had my dream, he had a dream where he was praying for Femi's son, Joel, and he was delivering him in his dream. And um, Pastor Yara also had a dream that night that she was pregnant. So immediately something clicked in me. Okay, I had a dream that I was giving birth and um, Pastor Ainsley and Pastor Yara were praying for me for deliverance from the trauma. So I mentioned my dream. And the pastors both prayed for me to release that trauma and that fear and that anxiety off my life. And as they prayed, my hands started to sweat. I started to feel really hot. My head was sweating. And I felt, I really felt like something broke off that day. And then the next day, I had another dream. And in the dream, I was in my primary school church that I went to I was an adult in the dream but I was in the church and Olivia and I were there and we were supposed to be singing the hymns for the service that day um, but the service had ended and I sort of looked around and I was like oh we didn't end up singing today um, and I was dressed in my church clothes and after the service the service had ended the church was full and after the service had ended, I had to go and change back into my school uniform, which I had in a plastic bag. But when I went to look for my school uniform, it was missing and I looked everywhere and I couldn't find it. And that was the end of the dream. Um, and then during this week, um, pastor spoke to me and asked me, has anything else come up or have you sensed anything since you had that traumatic dream and I shared this 
second dream that I had about me being in the church and um, I was supposed to sing and I didn't end up singing and the uniform, my uniform was missing. It had gone. I was looking for it. It wasn't there. And I felt that that dream was a sign from God that something had happened. Something had broken off my life from the past. It was, it was done. And pastor agreed the same. He felt like that dream was a sign from God that God had broken something off my life. Um, and then um, pastor began to pray for me. But before he prayed, he asked me, has anything else from your childhood come up recently? And there was nothing that I could really pinpoint that God was showing me, except whenever we're on the Zoom meetings or we're in church um, in the recent times and pastors been praying for things from our past, I would always see this vision. And to me, it didn't seem really that bad and the vision was me sitting on my bed as a 10 year old girl in my room but the room was dark it was dark and I was sitting on my bed alone and he said okay and then um, he began to pray for me and as he prayed I saw two pictures side by side one was the picture of me as a 10 year old girl sitting in my room alone and the second picture was the day that I was in hospital and I found out that my first daughter had died in my womb. So I was full term. I was five days until I had to um, give birth. And I was at the hospital just for a checkup. And I was lying on the bed in the room. I was in the room where they do the ultrasounds. So the room was quite dark and I was lying on that bed and I could see the image of me lying on that bed and the same darkness that I could see in the vision as a 10 year old girl it was the same darkness that I saw in the room that day when the doctors told me your baby had died and that same loneliness that I could sense in that first image me as a 10 year old girl was the same loneliness that I felt at that moment when the doctors had told me my daughter had died and then as he began to pray, I remembered that when those words were spoken to me, it was like someone was giving me a spoon of bitter medicine and I swallowed that medicine. I put the medicine in my mouth and I just braced myself and I swallowed it, but I didn't cry. I didn't cry when I received the news. My coping mechanism from when I was young was if something bad happens, I just, brace myself, I'll take a deep breath, I'll swallow it and I'll move on and I'll deal with it. But pastor graciously and gently explained that God has given us emotions for a reason. When bad things happen, we need to release, we need to cry, we need to let it go because otherwise it gets, it comes into us and it, it takes over and it might not seem like it on the surface, you know, you might seem okay. And I did. I seemed strong. I was strong. Okay. Something bad's happened. I look to God and I'll keep going and I'll move on. And, you know, this is okay. And, you know, I have to have my family for support and sort of I just went on with life. And I never dealt with, yeah, the trauma or the fear that I experienced at that time. I sort of just swallowed it, buried it, and that was it. Um, and then, uh, Yeah, and then so my, the nightmare that I had, it stemmed from that moment where all that fear I'd buried and then when I had Ella and Aya and Sophia, that fear and that trauma was still buried in me. It was buried deep down inside. It hadn't really come to the surface. And um, as pastor began to pray to break off that fear and trauma, I cried out and all this yeah, crying and travailing sort of came out of me and it was released out of me. And then I saw this amazing vision that God gave me. I saw God the Father in heaven and he was dressed like a king in his royal robe. He had a crown on his head and he was just dressed like this really amazing, beautiful, divine king. And he came to me as a 10-year-old girl. 
and he put this beautiful red robe around my shoulders and he put this gold crown on my head and he gave me this skull, scroll, a golden scroll and he handed it to me. And then I saw another vision after that of me as a 10 year old girl and I looked like a peasant. I was dressed in old um, brown rags, dirty, and um, my clothes had holes in it. And I was holding this piece of paper. It was a tethered piece of paper. It had been scrunch scrunched up, but then unscrunched. Um, it was tethered all around and sort of a bit ripped. And I gave, I gave that piece of paper to the king. And yeah, it was just such a beautiful vision that God showed me that I'd given up my image and my will for my life as a little girl. I saw myself as unworthy, as a peasant, as not good enough. But God, the father of the king, sees me as a beautiful princess. And he's robed me with his robe and he's given me his golden scroll and he's released me his will for my life. And I just thank God. I thank God for Zoom because it wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for Zoom and this ministry. And I thank God for the pastors and I thank God for his faithfulness. He loves us so much and he's so faithful to bring, bring us to the place that he has for us. He wants us to achieve the will that he has for our life. And he's so gracious and faithful to his word, to his promise for us. And yeah, I just thank God. Thank you all. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, Mandela, when you were, were having the other three children, did you come into it? Uh, did those memories come in there just before you had those uh, children as well? No, no, not at all. I was really, I was believing God, you know, at that time I was coming to the church and I was believing mm -hmm. God with a lot of faith. But deep down inside, I obviously did have fear of what if, what if it could happen again? Because when it happened, the doctors didn't, they couldn't give me a reason as to why it happened. There was no cause. There was nothing that they could do to try to prevent it from happening again. There's nothing that they could say that it would or wouldn't happen again. They didn't know. So I didn't know either. And because it happened right at the end of the pregnancy, my whole pregnancy you know, is trying to be strong, but there's still that fear of can mm. it happen again? Can it happen again? So. Yeah. Till, till yesterday, that, that was there, you know, you know, when I, I don't know when it was, a few days ago, when I called you, that was still there, that fear and that trauma was in there. So uh, you know how you were set free as a little girl, how you gave everything to the Lord, you know, you gave it to the Lord and then he put this robe on you, is that right? You sense him putting a robe yes. on you? Yes. Yeah, and, and he gave you something as well, you know, it's a, a scroll or something. Yeah, that golden scroll. Yeah, so he took things away from you only about three, four days ago, right? When he when you were ready for God to deal with it, he, hmm. he took it away from you. But inside your your mind, your will, your emotions, you have gone through that you buried as a little girl as about 10 years old you buried that darkness inside of you. And then you get the shock, you, like you said, you took that poison in when, you, when the doctor gave that news and you buried that, I'll, I'll get a hold of this, you know? And this is where we got to be very careful that we, because the gifts will operate without repentance. You know, you, you said something, you always thought about that scripture when I mentioned it, isn't it? Yeah, you say that all the time. And I always say that to myself, the gifts will operate without repentance. It doesn't matter how well I can sing or how well I can, you know, do things. The gifts will operate without repentance. That's not showing that my heart is right with God. I need to make sure that my heart is clean because that's what God wants. Things can look nice from the outside, but is my heart clean? And that, mm. that sticks with me all the time. Yeah. Amen. See, uh, see, church, uh, th thanks a lot, Mandela, for sharing it. If, if anything props up, just interrupt me and then come in. If I, but I want everyone to get this right. Whether it's, I, I mentioned to Mandela as well, whether it's Bill Gates or whether it's a prophet, evangelist, teacher or anything, the gifts are given. And what Bill Gates got is, I mean, the guy is not saved. 
there is an advantage for all of us for what the people have done. They're building bridges and trains and planes and aircraft carriers and you know other other stuff as well to blow up the world. Uh, they they have got gifts to do it, and God will not give you the. God has given you something before the foundation of the world. He gives you. So we are focused on gifts, but it's not the gifts; it's the fruits. But the fruits come when my cup is cleansed. When I was a child, like with your, your in your case, like even last uh, a few weeks ago, Julie shared her testimony how she was so close to her grandmother that she went, she took everything of her grandmother's pain from the day she, uh, all the stories that her grandmother told about her rejection, she took it all into herself. And this is what we do. If we don't get the right teachings of the, of the, and the word of God dwelling in our life, I have to change it, you know. But because Mandela kept coming to the transformation meeting, like she mentioned before, if not for the transformation meeting, we, I don't know, we would have probably even not come to a place like this, because there's a lot of Christians are building churches and their books and they're going here, they're leading people to the Lord and they're all good. You need to do that, feeding the poor, uh, you know, the orphans, the widows, the Bible says to do that, don't stop doing it. But if I'm driven by this grief and pain, which was locked up in, in Mandela from a little child, it was locked up deep inside of her. And it actually, I believe that loneliness, you know, even Yara with uh, Mandela, when, when I took her through, uh, through the prayer or deliverance or whatever you want to call it, even Yara, although I was on the phone, Yara seen this black stuff coming out of Mandela. There was a lot of grief, a lot of pain, a lot of sorrow, a lot of sadness just pouring out of her, coming out of her. And she got, took her out and brought her out to that 10 year old girl from that room and then took her back to when, when she got the news there and delivered her. And I do believe that God is going to do something mightily. Okay, what I want to get across here is that I'll read this scripture. Uh, Hebrews 4.12 said, the word of God is alive and powerful and sharper and sharp, sharper than two edged than any two edged sword, cutting between the soul, the spirit, and between the joints and the marrow, exposing the innermost thoughts and desires of the heart. So, see, Mandela was saved, she came to church, she was spirit filled, everything was happening. But these things were so deep and buried inside of her life that you can put Christianity on top of it. Her spirit is perfect with God. There is nothing wrong with the spirit. Otherwise, she would have not come to this place for a total deliverance. But because she threw herself into the presence daily in the transformation meetings, there was a shell there that was snapped and broken. God could not give her the dream five years ago or two years ago or even when it started. But she allowed herself to come with the word of God and allowed the word. Now, the word is what we are doing today, church. The word of God is worshiping the Lord, praising the Lord. This morning, the singing, if you can grab hold of the words of those songs that was that word softens us and breaks the shell on the inside that God can come into the secret things. That's what it says. It's the secret things. In, in, uh, in the uh, New American Standard Bible it says, and it's able to judge the thoughts and the intention of the heart. And another Bible it says, and discerns the thoughts and the intents of the heart. So it's the word of God. I have to allow the word of God to come into me. But what we are doing in the transformation meetings, we are breaking bread daily. It's not just, you know, getting the word of God and declaring and declaring the word of God and hoping and, and things are not happening. They are not having the breakthrough because they are not taking that word and acting on that word. So the songs, the testimonies, 
the words of knowledge that is coming through. It is all put together that, that Mandela was brought into this place to break that shell. And then God gave her the dream to reveal what happened to her on that particular time. But the, the church, what's most important to God and to Mandela and to that whole family is till that curse was broken a few days ago, the children could have carried that grief and that sorrow and that pain because Mandela downloaded it into her three children till it was broken only a few days ago. The greatest thing that could have happened to Mandela is those children are blessed today because that cord is being snapped off Mandela's life and that 10 year old girl and she gave her, she released it like God showed him. I mean, he even demonstrated that and showed her how she had that bit of paper and how, how she had it crumbled up and she was holding it in her hand in that darkness. She said, I feel this tremendous darkness. She had to give it to the Lord. As she gave it to the Lord, that cord was snapped off the demonic things of the past where you get rid of the old and then she connected onto God and then God put a robe of righteousness and gave her a scepter and, and gave her a scroll, which is her destiny, not only for Mandela, that destiny is going to increase and multiply into her children's children for a thousand generations. Can you see church that just, just going to church once a week is not, this, this thing is not going to work. You need to come. I'm talking about myself too, because I need healing to my own body. I need the breakthrough. I need to get into the secret things of the heart. I mentioned this before, but there are people outside there and some of you, you, you think you heard it, but, but listen to it again today. If you go on Google, you can, you can say this thing, okay? These are the things that are buried inside of us. There is a, there is a thing I've called the cellular memories. There was a memory in Mandela's life that was buried so deep down at a 10 year old girl. But there are issues that happened even before that, but it multiplied and increased. And then Mandela had a will of her own and she can be an engineer, a doctor, a scientist or whatever it is, a pastor, a preacher, and all those things will work. And everybody will clap their hands whether it's good or bad, they will clap their hands. But the thing is, they, they were in the memory, mem in the cellular memory, it was buried in there. This, if you go on Google, you will see this thing, how a, ch uh, a child, I think 10 years, eight years, I don't know which one, but they had a, I think it was a heart transplant if I go back. And after the transplant, this, this girl started getting nightmares and they started writing down because they couldn't get her out of the nightmares. And uh, there was a lot of fear and terror and torment that was in her life. They started writing it down. And in the nightmares, she had, she had a, um, a memory in the nightmares of a registration number. So they gave it to the police and they got the murderer of the donor and put him in, you know, of course, put him in jail because he had killed this child and put her in the trunk of the car. And that, lay, that girl who gave her a heart or a liver had in a cellular levels the registration number of the car. And it was, and it was given to this person. So in the cellular memories of another person who was already dead and buried, it was in the heart of that person that when it came into this human being, that cellular memory was still there. So all of us have gone through shock and trauma and fear in some area of our life. In, in life, you go through stuff, marriages, broken homes, abuse, sexual, emotional, verbal abuse, and it can shock and traumatize. Just a negative word can traumatize a person forever. And it can go into that cellular memory. Something from your father, your mother, the friction, 
the arguments of the uncleanness, the perverted thing that is in the atmosphere of that house, it goes into the cellular memory of that child and it locked Mandela in there for so many decades to God set her free uh, only a few days ago. So th this is the power church of, that's why we need to seek the Lord and allow that according to that word, we need to allow the word of God in, in every fashion and every way to cut through the soul. I mean, it says it's even sharper than any two-edged sword because it's got to cut through the soul, cut through the, it cuts through the bone, the marrow and get into the very cellular memory and set you free. Then that word of God can set those, that darkness. God took all that darkness away from Mandela. All that pitch darkness just come out of her and left her straight away. Paul the Apostle in, in, in um, I'll get, I'll get um, Shamin to share something and, I, and I'll take it from there again. Uh, if you're there, Shamin, can you switch your... Um... Yes, Pastor, I am here. Um, um, what I shared yesterday, yeah. a personal testimony of the doctor. Yeah. Um, it's this woman doctor in Namibia, in Africa. One of her friends, a 34-year-old man, got sick, contracted COVID, and um, he was admitted to hospital, and she was um, treating him. And um, at first, everything was going well, but then his oxygen levels um, fell, and to the extent it fell so low that um, they couldn't treat him at that facility anymore, and they arranged for a plane um, to take him to another facility. But before he left, um, she was sitting next to his bed and um, she's a born again um, lady. So she um, she was praying in her home language, which is Afrikaans and which I never mentioned yesterday. She actually found herself um, speaking the words of the song Waymaker, Miracle Worker, Promise Keeper, mm -hmm. You know, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. And then she just sat there, but she was worried because his levels had fallen to about 50%, his oxygen levels. And um, she, she just laid her hands on his chest and she started to pray in tongues. And um, she prayed for a while. And then they pushed him out and they took him in an ambulance and they flew him out to another hospital. When he got to the other side, his oxygen had gone up to about 90%. And um, the next day it was 100%. And he sent her a message after two days, he was um, discharged, he was released. He sent her a message and he said that when she laid hands on his chest and prayed, he could feel the release. He could suddenly just feel everything opening up. And she just praised God, all oh, glory to God. So I just believe with the tongues as we spoke yesterday about the tongues, um, you know, where it says death and life are, are in the power of the tongue. Mm. I believe it's, it's, a, it's a weapon of warfare. Wow. You know, we can fight the spiritual with our tongues and we can speak life with our tongues. So, yeah, oh, it's really an yeah. awesome testimony. Glory to God. Praying in tongues. Um, got the man released and he's fine now. He's back home again and all good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I, I believe there is fire church in praying. Thanks to Shaman for sharing that. Uh, this is what happening in the, in the transformation meeting. This happened yesterday, church. So this is where the growth is coming in and God is breaking the shell. There is wisdom coming. There is understanding coming in. There is meditation on the word. There is a, a pondering and, and on the testimonies. And, and these are things that are opening out. But if you look at tongues in Romans, Norman, Romans um, 8, 26, it says, when you do not know how to pray, you pray in the Holy Ghost with yearning, li listen to that word, with yearning and groaning that cannot be uttered. That's the same as that word, the intense and the things deep down in the heart church with yearning and groaning that cannot be uttered. It's, it's reckoned the fire, the heat will kill this virus, the COVID-19. That, 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 that really excited me, church. Whatever area you need in your life, just lay hands and pray in the Holy Ghost. But you've got to believe that there is a deep, pure prayer that comes from the courtrooms of heaven that focuses you don't add your two cents word it goes in the fire of god goes in. so god is giving us 
keys of how to break through into areas and have faith. So that's another way that you can have faith to break through into those areas that you have not got uh, to um, uh, praying in tongues. And even Paul the Apostle, when you see in, um, in Romans, uh, uh, rather Galatians 4, 19, he said, my little children whom I travailed, travailed in birth till Christ is formed in you. Church, he travailed and what some of the translators said in pain. So there is, there is a deep pain, a deep travailing. And like when you're praying in tongues, there is something that takes place from the inside. He travailed till Christ is formed. So you want your husband, your wife, the, you know, uh, your, your child to be uh, uh, delivered. You travail till Christ is formed in them. Now, he's talking to the Christians. If they, were, they had Jesus and Christ was formed in them, why did he waste his time in travailing? Because there is labor pain. Most of you women know what labor pain is. You've gone through it. He was travailing because the compassion and the love of God was burning inside of him. And he's the one who spoke about Romans uh, 8.26. When you do not know how to pray, you pray in the Holy Ghost with yearning and groaning. That is true intercessory prayer for that person, that thing, or whatever it is you want, whether it's COVID-19, or whether it's your business, or a deliverance in your body, or whatever it is, church, the key is faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of the Lord. You don't have faith for that area. You throw yourself either in the transformation meetings, and if you can't come because of various reasons and you've got all the excuses in the world, it doesn't really matter, church. You still have to get up in the morning, get up 15 minutes early. And if you can't pray in the transformation meeting, there is no excuse. You can seek God for 15 minutes earlier before you go to work or whatever you can do. So you can spend that time with God and it's important if you love your wife, your husband, and your children, and your grandchildren, your son-in-laws, and you want breakthrough in your finances, the key is there. That scripture that I use today, I pray that you will prosper in all things, not in one thing. What I'm saying is he has given you the keys. As we come together in unity, God is, God is commanding a blessing. To you guys, to every one of you, he's commanding a blessing. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So what you got to do is, church, I, I spoke to somebody, I spoke to a few people in this area. What they do is they quote the word of God, which is good. Thank God. Quote the word of God. Say the word of God. But I'll give you something more deeper, church. You, you pay full attention to that word according to the breakthrough that you need. You felt full attention. You give your heart, your mind, your soul, according to that word. Like say that word that I gave you today, that I pray that you will prosper in all things. You full attention to that word, not just declaring the word. That is easy. Good, you do that because God watches over his word. But you've got to make that word be a part of you. The word is the living God. You full attention your heart, your soul, uh, and expose yourself to that word and break that word and meditate on that word. And these are, these are some, some things I'm going to give you right now. I sent the scripture, but before I come to that, I sent the scripture to everyone who uh, got the message yesterday on um, um, Psalms 133 uh, about the meetings. By, by the way, if anyone listening to me, if you, uh, if you are not getting the messages from the church, I sent one yesterday. If you didn't get one yesterday, you need to call me and send your mobile number. And if you are getting two or three messages, you still need to call me because you need only one message. Okay, I know faith comes by hearing and hearing, but you need to get one message, not three messages, because I've got to get it all all together and I will. I send the scripture church in Psalms 133 it says, behold uh, now, behold how good and pleasant is is, is, is is the brothers who dwell together in unity. It is like precious oil 
And I like this church in the Amplified Bible. It says, like precious oil of consecration poured on the head, coming down on the beard, even the beard of Aaron coming down upon the hedge of his priestly. Now, you're, you're called to be priestly robes, it says. And I like this, consecrating the whole body. So there is a few things that are here. You've got to come together in unity, which I'm talking about the transformation meetings and getting together with the body of Christ in unity because you're losing out. Like what Charmin shared, there's a million things that have been shared or a thousand things that have been shared. You're missing out on what have been shared. And, it, and in three, it says, and it is like dew on Mount Hermon coming down on the hills of Zion. Zion, we know, is the church. And there the Lord commands a blessing life forevermore. So if you want God to command you a blessing for life forevermore for your children's children for a thousand generations, here it is, church. How good and pleasant it is when brothers come together and dwell in unity is what I'm talking about today. And what he said is consecrated, church. Like he said, puts the oil flowing and consecrating the whole body. So if you want healing, you come to the body of Christ because we are, we are getting ourselves stirred up from the things of God and people are so hungry to listen to the word of God. I, th I think Mandela just, she, she mentioned before that uh, to me um, about um, that she, you didn't, you were tired or something that day. Is that right, Mandela? Yeah, um, that morning that I had that first dream. I was really, um, I was really tired and I thought to myself, it's okay, I'll just sleep in today. But I never missed a Zoom meeting since I started logging on. I never missed one meeting. And I thought to myself, oh, I'll just sleep in today. But then again, I, I said, no, I'm going to log in. And if I hadn't have logged in that day, I don't think this would have happened. I wouldn't have got my deliverance because yeah. it was the right time to share. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, that, see. That alone, the, the Holy Spirit prompt me just now. Can you see how we are moving in the spirit church? This is exactly what happens in the transformation meetings. Now, I, God prompted that some one of you need to hear that. It, maybe not for all. Somebody on Zoom, somebody elsewhere around the world, thousand miles away. It doesn't matter. You needed to hear that because that was a prompting of the Holy Ghost. Those are the things that you need to stick on the fridge because at the blink of a miracle, the devil will push like anything. And probably this would have not happened because, you know, I have mentioned this so many times and God is giving me the answers now. Why is it that powerful men of God and I know God moved on their life and all of a sudden they are gone. The devil comes and attacks it. They cannot get rid of that cancer or that arthritis or what, because these things are in the very cellular memories, church. They're in the cellular memory. They're buried down. And every one of us, our mothers and fathers and grandfathers have gone and they freely downloaded it onto us. But thank God for the blood of Christ, church. Shima Tony Marakandea. Thank God for the blood of Christ that can come into that place and it can break those curses of your grandfathers, your grandmothers. Those altars can be broken today, church, by the power of the Holy Ghost and the blood of Christ. And you meditating, you using the word. The epistles were written to what we are doing at the transformation meetings every day in the morning. The epistles were written to what we are doing every day in the morning. Mandela just proved it. The devil want to stop us. Somehow he knows, church. Somehow he knows. I do not know how or whatever it is. He will block you. I, I shared yesterday that there was a friend of mine who really moved powerfully in the things of God. And he was that day, he was in Mango Hill. He was, he was meeting this Christian guy. And that was the day he was led to the Lord. But two horses on Mango Hill Road, you know, Mango Hill Road, where there were mango trees on both sides of the road there, you know, two horses wiped off his car. And he knew somehow he was an unsaved man that the devil wanted to stop him going, going to this place and getting prayer. And he somehow, after the accident, he somehow ended up in prayer and he gave his heart to the Lord that day. 
somehow the devil knows that you continue to do it till you get your breakthrough like i mentioned before you don't have faith faith is going to come your way i said you don't have faith it is available for you because it cometh. Say it's cometh. It is coming your way if you meditate on the word. Faith comes by hearing. You want healing in your body? You get to the transformation meetings. You get to what's happening because that's exactly what the epistles did, church. They broke bread daily and God added on to the church. But what God is doing with us is he's cleaning the inside of the cup because he wants a river pure water to come out of us, not contaminated, bitter water and control water. Like Mandela, she controlled the shock and the trauma and never allowed her emotions. Even as kids, we are said, boys don't cry. You know, you need to roll on the ground and cry. But when you're crying, don't look to your problem and cry. Look to Calvary and cry that you can bring the exchange. Amen? No one is going to cry for nothing. Something has to trigger you to cry. God triggers a memory. Okay, this is the key that I want to give you, church. And you know, I, I was speaking to a person and they are speaking to quite a few people in this in this manner. Okay, they're doing the same, they're doing the right thing. They are reading the word of God. Some of them are even coming to the transformation meetings and they are, they are declaring the word of God. I said, go a little bit more deeper like this, okay? If you want your healing. This is healing, but you can apply this to every other area in your life, okay? One area is sometimes, you know, you go through something, a bad report comes in or something is happening to your father, your son, your child, or whoever it is, things are going on. And then you're trying to pray and you're praying, but your mind is wandering away. You know, you're, you're trying to get focus on the Holy Ghost but you're, you know what the Lord says, you know you have to pray, you know you have to pray in tongues, but you're still praying in tongues, but you're tormented by this thing, you're praying for this thing. Okay, this, try this and this works, okay? But you need to put it into practice like the word of God says, you put it into practice. Sit down on a chair and you've got this bad news or you're not getting healed, you did everything you need to do, uh, you, you know, uh, your husband is doing this, your wife is doing it, your friend is doing it, your child is doing it, and, and you're trying to pray for your child by your torment. Just relax. Number one thing is just relax. Sit down on a chair. Make yourself comfortable. Don't open your mouth because sometimes we open our mouth too much because we are trying to manipulate God to get it because in that darkness, God can't hear you. All you got to do is Jesus is not on Calvary. You got to get that. What I'm going to say right now, he's not on Calvary. I know where he is. You got to know where he is. He's sitting at the right hand side of the Father forever making intercession. But he's pure. He's a holy God. He's got a way that he wants it. He wants our mind to be right. He wants our mind to be clear. He wants us to have the mind of Christ that we will pray with the mind of Christ. So what I do is I relax. And I, and I see the crown of thorns. Now, in Israel, apparently you don't get those thorns here. God, God ordained it to grow in Israel. I don't know how it is, but those thorns are like nails. They put the crown of thorns on him because he proved to be king. They, they want to mock and laugh at him. They put the crown of thorns. Apparently those thorns are like nails. And they are thick, they are, uh, you know, like nails. And they, uh, that's the word of God. The crown of thorns is the word of God. So can you see what I'm saying? Meditate, ponder on it. Chew on it. Put your heart, your attention, everything on the crown of thorns. They hit the crown of thorns into his head, which is the word of God. So you ponder on it. You meditate on it. The crown of thorns, they hit it into his head. And the blood rushed down all on his face because it pierced into his skull and the blood came down. They, they nailed him on the cross, on his right hand. As they put the nails in, the blood just comes out of him. It's the word of God. Right hand, left hand, right foot, left foot, you know, and the blood just pours out of him. They put the sword on Jesus. They pierced the sword on his side. It's the word of God. And blood and water came out of him. It's the word of God. So can you see, you're meditating and pondering on this word of God right now. At the whipping post, he was there. They, they used... Uh, this stripe, 39 stripes on him, and they were made with, with glass and uh, bone, 
you know, on, on this thing so that as he whipped him, every whip, the cue is, they his flesh just got ripped off him and the blood just got gushed off him. 39 stripes. It's the word of God. I'm meditating and pondering on the word of God. You know, the, uh, the cruelty that he did, they pulled his beard out and they, you know, and pulled his beard out and the flesh and the blood started pouring out of him. He, he was in the garden of Gethsemane. He, because he loved you and me, he, he drops of blood because he knew that he was going to be marred beyond record. He read the Bible, church. He, he knew what was written in Isaiah more than a human. They couldn't recognize him more, more, uh, more than a human. They couldn't recognize him. He was marred beyond recognition. Beyond a human, that's what I want to get. Get he was marred beyond a human. They couldn't recognize him, and he knew exactly that was going to happen to him. But he took it on him. So I go back to the crown of thorns, like nails, and the blood coming up. And you meditate and ponder on that church. You will get your breakthrough. Try and get into the transformation meetings for five minutes. You can do it. We are there for six hours. You can do it for fifteen minutes at least. But set a time and a place for God. Don't give him the crumbs if you want the best. Even the crumbs are pretty good because that woman said, even the dogs are worthy of the crumbs. Amen. And God said, there is no one with such a lot of faith. But I like to get the cream. I like to get the crumbs. I like to get the bread. I want to get the whole lot because God said, I will prosper in all things. I want to prosper in all things. But do you know, even the passion and the desire and the, and the burning the desire that I have and that God orchestrated Mandela's testimony and, you know, what Charmin shared and, you know, all this is, I'm so excited, church. I'm burning with passion that you will get this, that you will take it. You will do something about it because this works, church. The word of God is living. It's powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. You meditate. What better words can you meditate on? I know he's not on Calvary. I'm not crucifying him again. The, I know one thing when I mention those things to you. I didn't read these things in a book. God gave it personally to me. I know one thing. That's why I meditated to that extent. Because I know the devil cannot stand the blood of Christ. I know I'm slapping him on the face, church. I know that there is power in the blood of Jesus. I know, church, that the word of God will not return empty. I know, but when I get it in my heart and in my spirit, and I know how much he suffered and died for me, I will fall in love with him. It's not works, church. 90% of the church is putting the cart before the horse. They are loving their neighbors. They are becoming a Mother Teresa, which is good. Go and become a Mother Teresa, but make sure your heart and your cup is clean and then let the river flow that like in our transformation meeting, church, the word of God is flowing out of the people and they are coming out with mysteries, with testimonies. Like, like today, there is so much more that I, I can say what's happening in the transformation meetings. Every day there is something new that is happening. And I can, I can just sense the earlier church when the, why they broke bread daily. I can sense the excitement. But I thank you know, Mandela for her determination. And, and she's there every day. She's got three children. You know, they're running a business. She's got a lot on her plate. But she finds her time with God and with the fellowship. When brethren come together, in unity, then it is that sanctification takes place. The blood flows right into your innermost being, church, because you are taking it from the body of Christ. He loves the body so much, church. Jesus loves the body so much. When Paul the apostle was killing or helping to kill Christians, he said, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He loves the body of Christ. Don't come against the body of Christ. Even if they're in our church and they are on milk for 30 years, it's none of your business. 
Don't touch them with your thoughts, your actions, and things that are not happening. And this is the way to do it. I am not called to run the church like Baptist, Methodist, Seventh-day Adventist. And they are all doing a job. And praise God, at least they are preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, right? But I will not shift on what God is doing for me. When I look at people like Mandela and the testimonies that have been shared recently from uh, from uh, Julie and many of you know, Norm was in the middle of revival and God bought him and totally and radically changed his life. And you see what Paul, uh, Norm is doing today. Bill is another person that, uh, you know, I know where he was. He was not even baptized in the Holy Ghost. He knew the word of God thoroughly. He probably knew the word of God more than me. And, but thank God for his persistence, church. His persistence, you know, even in some things I would have probably even said that was not in line, but he knew that God called him into our church. That's why I like people who are called into the church. They will stay there for better or for worse till they do us part because they know that they are called by the Holy Spirit. And look at, look at Bill today. You know, the wisdom, the knowledge, you know, he's called to be an apostle. He's anointed by God you know, into our church as an apostle in our church. But when he came, he didn't even want to be there. He, that was a fight between him. And all the Bible scholars and people who knew things were trying to pray him out of our church. But thank God that God wins the race. Amen? Now, can you understand, church, what, I, what, I, what I'm saying this morning? If you don't have a breakthrough in any area of your life, I'm telling you right now, you don't have faith, faith is coming, but you got to do something. Mandela did something. God did something first. Amen. He organized the, the transformation meetings. He organized the Zoom meeting. He knew about COVID-19 before anyone knew about it, but he organized it for Mandela, for all these people. You know who you are. I don't have to mention the names. You know how you are thriving and where you are in the things of God. Even today, you have got revelation. There are people listening to me out there. There are things that have happened in your cellular level. I'm going to pray for you right now that God is going to reveal if there is anything. Give you a dream or vision. Don't push it down, church. Mandela got the dream. Then I, I rang her up. I prayed for her. And then, then she said, oh, well, you know, I think God did something when I when you prayed because she felt something left. But till I prayed for her and called her back, you know, you write those dreams down and meditate and ponder on those dreams that God has given you. And don't go and give that dreams to every Dick Trom and Harry out there. Give it to somebody who knows how to give you a translation of that dream. And don't try to work the dream out on your intellect mind because we, our spirit is there but our, our carnal way want to do interpretation of the dream the dream god gives me particularly for deliverance when you have a dream if it doesn't mean anything to you it could be a nightmare could be any other dream just come and tell me write it down or send the dream a text to me if i'm not answering the phone write the dream down Remember, I told you this today. Text me the dream. Then it gives me time to read it when I got time and when I'm free and I can meditate on that dream. And if God has given, because God always gives me interpretation of the dream to set that person free. And I never had a clue about what happened to Mandela when she was 10 years old. But God knew how the devil locked her in there. That's why the psalmist said, he brought my soul out of prison that I may praise you. I mean, Mandela, God has given Mandela and Oliver and all these ones who are singing in our church, beautiful voices from heaven. Just there are people in the world who have got beautiful voices from heaven and they are good in their instrument. They have got the timing and they don't sing like me, you know, with broken records and, you know, the tune is there and singing another tune here, here there. They, they, they are perfect people. They hate God. They don't read the Bible. They don't do anything. The gifts are operating church. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul, Jesus said. This is what the Lord is giving. Our breakthrough anointing in our life to break through into your life that you will have life and have it more abundantly. Uh, you know, I, I bless the Lord every time when I look at this, 
uh, uh, Mandela's three children. You know, Ella came in the other day, we were talking about the word of something, and then she comes in and she's, she reads straight from the Bible in Ezekiel about the uh, dry bones. She reads it from there. Church, there is so much that is happening every day in the morning. I want a generation. The Bible says the generation of the upright will be blessed. When God says the generation of the upright is to be blessed, the upright need to get in there with the word of God and do what I told you today. I mean, there is so many other scriptures that I can rattle on, but the Holy Spirit will give you more. Meditate and ponder on the word. Let it work in your heart, in your mouth. If, if you're not having the breakthrough, meditate on those things that I told you. On the cross, at the cross, at the cross, I first saw the light and the burdens of my heart rolled away. Just sing those songs, those melodies to the Lord and thank him for what he have done on Calvary and meditate that he took your sin, your sickness, your corruption, your father's devils, your mother's devils, your, your greed, your uncleanness, perverted things. When you, when you look at that cross and you meditate and you fall in love with him, church, it's not one day. Mandela had to come for over a year every day to break that shell. And God said, okay, Mandela, you're ready today. I give you the dream right now. Came into a bedroom. <laughs> Shima Tony Marakatali Barangana. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Isn't he? Isn't there a rewarder of those who diligently seek him? You know, um, uh, Emma sang that song today. The more I seek you. The more, I, the more I want you, the more I know you, the more I seek you. Keep, that's what Mandela did. The more I seek you, the more I want you, the more I worship you, the more I praise you, the more I love you, Lord, the more I seek you. She was seeking the Lord, not her need. And, and all of us got needs. We had to start somewhere. Come for your need. Come for your business. Come for your finances. Come to become a millionaire. But keep on seeking him. He will take the greed out. He will take this out. And he will make you a trillionaire. <laughs> I mean, he knows how to work it. It doesn't matter where you start. We all started somewhere. I prayed some horrible witchcraft prayers when I started. I didn't know. I thought it was pretty good for me. You know, but God had mercy on me. He had grace on me. He had love for me. So give somebody else 30 years of grace. Give me 30 years of grace. If you feel that Yara and I are not doing this or not doing that, or this is the way to do it, this is the way that preacher said, or this preacher said, just give me 30 years of grace, okay? I've got the fruits of my labor and I will continue. I'm doing a good thing. So I, I'm not going to be drawn by any other people because God is building his house. He's building his kingdom and I can see the glory of God being revealed. Right now, I'm going to pray for you guys that God will reveal to you. But you got to make that commitment. They all work together, church. You got to make, I can't force you. I can't Bible bash anyone to Jesus. That is a life in the pit of hell. You got to make the choice because you got to make take the step. Mandela didn't want to come into that meeting, but because she built this thing up for so many, and she knew the work that was in the meeting, she said, no, God, I, I'm tired, but I'm still going for that meeting. And then God, God opened, opened up that dream and set her free that it's going to be broken off her life. It has been broken off her life and her, and her three children and her generations to come will be, will be broken. Father, I thank you, Father God. You know exactly, Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Ghost and the blood of Christ, Lord, we join our faith together and we come boldly to the courtrooms of heaven, Lord. As your word says, come boldly, Lord, boldly by the blood of the Lamb, Lord, not because we polished our lives, Lord, by your blood that you will reveal what happened, Lord, even in the womb, Lord God, things that were downloaded from our mummies, our daddies, Lord. Uh, our brothers, our sisters, our schools, and our own concepts, Lord, like Mandela shared, Lord. Lord, she had a will of her own, Lord God, to bury it right down, Lord God. Lord, we don't want to bury anything, Lord. We want to open up our heart today, Lord. Just look into his face. Look into his eyes right now. Just see the Lord while I'm praying. Just right in front of you right now. Look like the psalmist said, your face is what I seek, Lord. 
If you want, you can think about that crown of thorns being pushed and the blood just coming out. So you get your mind off of doubt and unbelief and fear and the devil is trying to reason you out into what I'm saying. You just look to the crown of thorns church. And, and believe that he took it on, on the cross, that he will give you love, power, and a sound mind, that you will have the mind of Christ right now. And God, as they open up their heart, Lord, and look and gaze to, towards you, that you will give them visions, you will give them dreams, Lord, encounters, things they buried, Lord. Since they laughed out and said, it's okay, Lord. My father was an alcoholic. My, fa my father was, did this. My mother did this. And uh, uh, they, they were wounded. They didn't know Jesus. So, uh, you know, except in a lie, Lord God, I command that lying devil to come out. That unclean lying devil, that, that demonic spirit, Lord God, I command that lying spirit to come out right now. And Lord, let the truth set them free today, Lord, because your word is truth and your word is life and your word energizes. Your word is life, Lord. Right now, Lord, let the truth set them free today, Lord. Lord, bring them out of that room. Bring them out of that house. Bring them out of that hospital, Lord, that they will decide, Lord, that faith comes by meditating and pondering on your word, Lord God, absorbing your word, Lord, that the word will work on their heart, on their mind, Lord God, that they will hold on to your word, Lord. They will, Lord, uh, uh, have full attention to your word, Father, not the circumstances right now, Lord, and you will take them into that place and bring them out that you will appear into that room, Lord. Give them dreams, give them visions, reveal everything, Lord, that have traumatized them. Some of you have been traumatized. I command that spirit of trauma that is holding you from receiving that healing in that very moment, you spirit of trauma, I command you, I command you, you spirit of trauma, loose them right now in the name of Jesus. That trauma in their mind, in their brain, that shock when those things happen, Lord, that shock, Lord, in the spirit that took place. I command that loneliness, that isolation as a little child to come out of that room, come out of that place right now and loose them in Jesus' name right now that the blood of Christ will pour into those areas right now, Lord God into those areas right now, Lord, that your presence, that you put your arms around them, Lord God, and you hold them close to you right now and release that grief, release that pain, forgive your mommy, forgive your daddy, forgive yourself, forgive your brothers, your sisters, nieces, nephews, teachers, the bullies in school, just release it all to the Lord and put all bitter root judgment to the cross, put it to the cross right now, and decree and declare that they owe you nothing. They owe, there are people, I'm not talking about everybody, there are people that God has revealed things to you today. I want you to confess it, that they owe you nothing. I want your ears to hear, because faith comes by hearing, not by reading. So you, you declare that they owe you nothing in that time of trauma, releasing your father, releasing your mommy, releasing your daddy, and putting all that pain, all that grief, all that sorrow, that spirit of grief, I command you to unwind yourself and come out right now. The traumas that you have gone through, through relationships where people have abused you verbally, physically, sexually, in areas that you have been wounded and crushed and broken, that you buried it. And God wants to open the heavens, but you have buried it. Somebody needed to hear that just now. God wants to open the windows of heaven over your life, but you have buried this. But God wants you to open up your heart and let that sorrow and sadness and bitterness and uh, uh, judgment leave your life. Because as you judge that person, you are locking that person from the heavens opening on their life. This is the way that you don't put the cart before the horse. This is the way that you love your neighbor as yourself. You start with this one. Because you did not forgive that person when you were five year old, 10 year old, three year old. I don't know what happened as a youth, as a, as a mother, as a, as a, when you come into your womanhood, a manhood, whatever it is. By you not forgiving that person, you are not loving your neighbor. 
And then you want to go and become a Mother Teresa, but you have bound your neighbor. <laughs> you know, you need to forgive that husband. You need to forgive that wife. You need to forgive that child. You need to forgive that mother because you have bound them up. Even if they are not living today, you need to bring it to Calvary and God will set you free today. They owe you nothing. You release them and say, God, I give them into your hands right now. They owe me nothing. As you do that, you release that person. I can see chains broken of people that you have released right now. I can see it in the spirit that that person is free now as you pray for that person because you've been praying for that person and nothing has been happening because you have bound the person first. So as you forgive that person, now the power of God can go and set that person free and bring them to Jesus. I know God is speaking to hundreds of people right now in that particular area. That's what the Holy Spirit is doing in the transformation meetings that he did just now to you. You, you bound that father and that mother, that brother, that sister, uh, husband, wife, ex-relationships and all. You have bound them and then you're saying, ah, I forgive them and you're praying for them. No, no, you have bound them. You need to come into that emotion, then ask God to bring the light into that, like Mandela, bring the light into that, that, that cellular memory can be washed in the blood of Christ. How can I have locked up cellular memories of torment, unforgiveness, hatred, bitterness, uncleanness in my heart, and then I go and sing a nice song to Jesus? How can I love the Lord with all my heart, with all my mind, with all my soul when I got some stinking cellular memories? There used to be a, a worldly song years and years ago. Memories that linger in my heart When my bloom turns to gold again Hallelujah. These memories, church, they lock you in. They lock you in. Those songs, they are real. They don't know they're singing it. They linger in their heart. Amen. God wants the blood of Christ to come into those foul mem memories. There could be uncleanness too, that you have given your soul to. That rhymes. <laughs> Unclean memories that you have given your soul to. But God wants the blood to come. This, these, these are things for me too, Chet, with all my heart. I know things I've given my soul to, my mind, my emotions, my lips, my, my tongue, my everything. You know, you, you're confessing, you're saying things. You're giving your soul to other people. God wants you to renounce everything else and let the blood of Christ come into you right now. Thank you, Jesus. Father, seal it right now, Lord God. All those memories, everything, Lord God, that they will meditate and ponder, Lord God, and everything will be absorbed and carried away from all their hearts. I break the counted act, spirits of retaliation. Lord, I break it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless you all. Thank you for coming. And thank you, Jesus. You got something you want to come here? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. You all got something out of that church? It was very powerful um, when you were praying, Ainsley. I seen like a deep, dark pit, and there were so many people coming out of that deep, dark pit. They were just climbing out of it. And like you were sensing that hundreds were coming, and I'm thinking, yes, because I can see them all coming out of that dark place. It was powerful. Amen. Thank awesome. you, Lord. Thank, thank God for the, the people who are turning up for the meetings, you know, and, and because of you guys, you know, yes. that con the contribution of the body of Christ, not just Yara and me, mm -hmm. it's a contribution. And that is what the epistles are written for, an epistle read by men. We, we should be epistles read by men. You mean? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Yes. And Melanie, I got this um, scripture for you. It's in uh, Jude verse 20 and it says but you beloved build yourself up founded on your most holy faith make progress rise like an edifice higher and higher praying in the holy spirit and then afterwards i thought that is such a good scripture for all of us to begin to pray in the spirit more and more just like 
Charmaine said, said that powerful testimony, and I want to read that again. It's in Jude, verse 20, and it says, But you, beloved, build yourselves up, found it on your most holy faith, make progress, rise like an edifice, higher and higher, praying in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, that is just so powerful. And um, so Amen, thank you. Is Sylvie there still? Yes, Sylvie's there. Sylvie, I had a vision of you in a car, and uh, a car represents ministry. And I just see that the power that you're being uh, flowing in is become greater. There's a greater power and a greater authority that God has downloaded to you. Amen. And it's like you, you're going to go in a new dunamis power, and you're just going to see, wow, God has really just blessed you with a greater power and authority that you've had uh, before. And Deanna, I just get that scripture in Psalm 121 where it says, my help cometh from the Lord God. And I just see that um, the help that you've been crying out to God for, he's going to download it. He's going to do something and he's going to bring about miracles and you are going to have the breakthrough and you're going to see victory coming into those areas, the very things that you've cried out to God for. And Helena, I just thought about when... Uh, Jesus spoke to Martha and he said to Martha, didn't I say to you that if only you would believe that you would see the glory of God? Hallelujah. And Father, I just thank you for Belinda, Father God. I thank you that you are lifting her up and you are bringing her into a new place, Lord God. Amen. I thank you, Lord, that her feet are blessed. Blessed are the feet of those who bring good news, that she's a bearer of good news and she'll distribute that good news, Father God, to those ones that are broken, those ones that are rejected, those ones, Lord God, that have been inflicted with the calamities of life, Father. She'll bring the good news, the hope of the gospel, Father God, and that will break the stronghold, that will break mindsets, Father God. Touch her today, Lord God. Lift her. Thank you for your protection around about her, Lord God. And you're bringing armor bearers around about her, Lord God, that will make intercession on behalf of her, Lord God, that her voice will be, be heard, Lord God. Her voice will be heard on high. And Father, I just thank you for what you're doing in a children's life and a family's life that are near and far, Lord. You are healing their hearts. You're bringing deliverance. You're releasing them and setting them free, Lord God, from those generational curses. It's a new day. It's a new hour when you are doing awesome things. And Father, I thank you for Charmaine, Lord God. She's a catalyst, a catalyst, Lord God. And Father, I thank you that she's going to say awesome and mighty things, Amen. the unfolding of your purposes Amen. and your plans, Lord God. You are getting ready to do something awesome in, in her and Barry's life, Lord God. You are getting ready to open up, open up new Amen. things, open up new doors for them, Father God. I thank you that they are blessed. They are blessed going out and they are blessed coming in, Lord God. You're going to bless them mightily. You're going to bless them in amazing ways, Father God. I thank you for blessing them, Lord God, in the new and the now. You are doing awesome things. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for Nithia, Lord God, this day. I thank you for this mother, Lord God, and her prayers have reached your ears. They've come on high, Father God. A woman, Lord God, that many times have felt alone. And many, Lord God, a woman that has felt like she's on the battlefield all by herself. But, Lord, you are right there with her. Amen. One will put a thousand to fly, two will put ten thousand. You give her that strength. You enable her. You're bringing yes, her amen. into a new place, into a higher realm, Lord God. And she's going to begin to see the new things that you have. She's going to begin to be having pressed upon her heart. Lord God, the strategies, the keys that you are going to give her. And she's going to go in the direction that you are leading her, Father God. She's going to begin to pray in areas, Lord God. You're going to pinpoint family members. You're going to bring before her those ones that need a breakthrough in the different areas, Father God. And she's going to be a woman that's going to stand and intercede and make a make make much progress in the spirit lord god because you're going to open up a spiritual eyes father god and she's going to command those mountains to be removed that have been standing before family members she's going to command those mountains to be removed to be that cast into the sea father god she's going to be that woman lord god that's going to make spiritual progress father god i thank you lord god that you are touching her and lord god you are blessing her mightily father god hallelujah thank you jesus Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you for Karana, Father God. You just see the way that she takes. And like Job said, he knows the way that, that you take. And when he has tried you, you shall come forth as gold. Father, your hand is upon her, Father God, to lead her up higher, Lord God. Even though there's been a lot of opposition, there's been attacks, Father. There's been a, a, a real battle even in the mind, Lord God. But, Lord, you have got your hand upon her to bring her up higher, Lord God. You are going to deliver her. You are going to deliver her. Holy Spirit, you are the one that stands by her. You are going to bring her forth. You are going to bring her through. I thank you for the testimony that's going to come forth. Hallelujah. You are doing an awesome thing deep in her heart, deep in her life. You are setting her free, Lord God, from all the things that have encumbered her. You're releasing her from the stress and the pressure that she's been going through, and you are healing her heart. Lord God, there's been a lot of disappointment. There's been a lot of evil things that have come to attack her in all different forms, Father God, but you are there to release her. And I just see that God is going to come and bring liberty and freedom into areas where the enemy has come to, to break through, even to break through hedges, to break through and, and torment your mind, to see the Lord is just lifting off, lifting off, releasing you from all the heaviness and he's healing you. There's been emotional pain mm -hmm. to see the Lord pouring in his healing balm and healing you on the inside where there's been emotional pain, mm -hmm. where there's been ones that have let you down, ones that have just rejected you and just pushed you away and just excluded you. You've been one that's been excluded even from, from family members, even ones that have befriended you in the past. Mm -hmm. The Lord is healing you even this day, even pouring healing oil into you and he's setting you free. He's setting you free. I just see the Lord's preparing a new path for you to walk on, a new day, a new beginning. And it's like, I just see a new chapter in, in a book of your life, oh, a new really season yeah. that God is opening up for you and he's calling you to come up higher. He's calling you to come up higher because God is going to restore you and he's going to give you the desire of your heart and no good thing will he withhold from those whose walk is upright. Amen. Yes, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, mm -hmm. Jesus. And Father, I thank you for a shell. Father, I thank you that your mighty hand is upon her, Lord God. And Lord, in spite of the battles and the, and the winds that are blowing around about her, Father, I thank you, Lord God, that you give us strength. You give us strength, like the word says, when having done all, stand and stand again. And Rochelle, I just see that there's an inward peace that God is bringing you, an inward peace, and you're just going to feel that peace. You're going to feel that, that stillness of the Spirit of God. He's just emanating his peace all around you and he's releasing you from stresses that have been trying to even get into your physical body releasing you from pressure releasing you even from discouragement the lord is just bringing that stillness that peace that rest in your spirit and you are going to rest i uh, just see the healing power of god just moving just in the very depths of your emotions into your physical body is just bringing that peace. And I just see the, the days up ahead. I'm just looking up ahead and, and I just see you rejoicing. It's like I just see you skipping, like a young girl would be skipping because there's joy in her heart and you're just gonna skip because there's gonna be a new beat. There's gonna be a new sound that's gonna come into you and there's gonna come a breakthrough and answer to prayer. And you're just gonna Hallelujah. rejoice because I just see Amen. the Lord opening a new door Amen. for you a new door of breakthrough, a new door of financial breakthrough. And God is gonna, just going to fill your family with a new joy. I just see laughter. Amen. I hear laughter coming out of your house, Hallelujah. laughter coming Glory. out of your family. Amen. And it's going to be a new joy and a new peace. Amen. I just see the old leaving and the new things of God coming in. Glory, glory. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You're going to be skipping, Rochelle. <laughs> popping and screaming and praising the Lord. Yes, Amen. Hallelujah. And Father God, I thank you that you surround Cloppers and Rudol and their children and Beverly, Father God, with your love and their families mm. that are near and far, that you're wrapping your loving arms around about Amen. them this day, Lord God. They are not going under. 
They are going over, Lord God, into the promised land. Everything that you have for them is for them, Father. I thank you that you are their great comforter, that you are their strengthener, you are their stabilizer, you are their anchor, Father God. I thank you that you need their cords of love that can never be broken, that you're bringing relationships closer together, that you are doing a mighty work beyond what our human eyes are seeing. You are with them, Lord God. Just strengthen them, Lord God. You are with them, Lord God, to restore the song in the heart, the song that's been lost, Lord God, the song that has died in the heart, but you are there to restore, Hallelujah. to restore everything that the enemy stole. And you are there to restore the word, to restore their strength, their, their, their stamina, their vigor. Lord God, you are there to, rest to restore the word, restore the word in them and their laughter and their joy, Lord God. Amen. I thank you, Lord, for your presence that runs deep, that runs deep, Lord yes. God runs deep emotionally, runs deep spiritually, runs deep relationships, runs deep socially, runs deep financially, and runs deep, Lord God, your peace that passes all understanding. Thank you that you are with them. And thank you, Father God, for Priscilla and Izzy and all her family, Father God, that you are standing there with them in this hour, Lord God. You are the glory and the lifter of their head. You are lifting their countenance up, Lord God. You are blessing them, Father God. You are making yourself so real. You are bringing your God, your reality, your promise into being, your God, your manifested presence in their life, Father God. I thank you that you are breaking down the walls of resistance. You're breaking down that wall of stubbornness, Lord God. You're breaking it down, Father. And you are bringing reconciliation and relationships. You are doing what is impossible with man. You are making your ways to be known in this family, Father God. There is a standard that has been raised, Father. You are touching Izzy's heart, Father God. And I thank you that she's a beacon of light that is just going to shine, Lord God, in the school. It's going to shine in family, Father. Thank you for her words of wisdom, Father God. And her words, Lord God, that will be so profound, Father. Words, Lord God, that will be just downloaded from the throne room, Father. What a blessing, Lord God. This child, Lord God, shall lead the adults. The child shall speak wisdom into the hearts of men, Father. This child shall see restoration, Lord God. And you will bless her mightily and lift her up and strengthen her, Father God. And Lord, you've got surprises for Izzy. You've got surprises for this child, Father God. You've got blessings that she knows not about that she's going to pour out Amen. upon her father. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, pastors. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bless you too. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming and thanks for the for standing with us, church, uh, at this time. You know, just continue to pray for one another and We'll see you. Yara has got a powerful message. Uh, logging again at six o'clock and logging tomorrow morning. And every day you can hear, just get onto the Zoom meetings, churches. It will do your world a good. You know, just uh, God, God is transforming lives. You know, like you can see it. You know, it's a, I couldn't even pray in this manner. God said he's going to do it many, many years ago. You heard the word that I will go, I'm going to do something in your days even if you were told you will not believe and many people have been touched hundreds or thousands have been touched by the word that is going across into other nations people from other nations have been delivered and set free and they have grown in the things of God Italy it's all because of you guys standing with us to it encouraging us and building us and praying for us as well Father, you cover everyone, Lord God, everyone, Lord, at the sound of my voice right now. Stacey, did you have something to share? Yeah, there, Stacey? No, no, sorry, Pastor. Oh, okay. Uh, 
just get in touch with me if, if something spoke to you and just send me a text. If I'm not, if I don't get in touch with you, I will anyway, right? Just if I don't, in a, in a few days, give me another call. You keep knocking at the door and the door will open. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Because sometimes I'm busy and sometimes I'm, um, uh, I'm having something to eat or sometimes I'm having something to something um, I'm slaving or I'm resting and uh, you know I got things I got to do as well and there are other people I minister to as well because we don't just come every Sunday and just preach a message and uh, see you in another week's time we would have not had these results today uh, touching so many hundreds of people uh, and the uh, transformation in lives if we didn't uh, do what we are doing so it takes a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of prayer and it, and I need to spend time here, and I have to need, need to spend time in God as well. Um, so uh, if I don't reply your call, just keep calling me, you know, and uh, keep sending a message because I get so many calls. And um, thank you, Father God. Just don't just think about anything negative about me or say anything negative about me. Keep on praying for me with the right heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Lord, you cover everyone, Lord, with your precious blood. And Lord, you bring them out of those places, Lord God, Lord, where they've been tormented and locked in prison, Lord God. Lord, that you put your angels around them, Lord. We decree and declare today we come in agreement, Lord, with Psalms 91 covenant that is available for every one of us, Lord God, that we will decree your word. We will believe your word, Lord, that a thousand will fall at your side, at our side, and 10,000 at our right hand, Lord. Not only us, but our families, our children, and nothing by any means will harm them, Lord. We cover them with your precious blood, Father God. Cover their homes, their cars, their belongings, Lord, that you hover over them on the highways, on the byways, Lord, inside their homes, Lord God. Lord, we break off any assignments and accidents and any curses, Lord. Lord, we smash them and break the power of every negative thought, every negative word over our church, Lord, over the people in our church and over their families, Lord. We, we curse those negative words and command those negative words to be a complete crop failure in the name of Jesus. And I prophesy life, Father, that they will have life and have it more abundantly, Lord, that they will prosper in all things, Lord, and be in health, Lord, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet, Lord, that they will be in health even as their soul prospers, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Preserve them, protect them, preserve them, and make them complete and whole in every area of their life, Father. We join together and we believe your word together in Jesus' name. Bless you all. Love you all. And thank you Bless for coming. You. Love you. Bye. Bless you tomorrow morning. Bye. 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 Bye.